Hello, my name is Tim Shubridge. Welcome to this video. This is a follow-up video to my Behringer System 55 review that I did quite recently. In this video, I want to look at a few of the modules in the System 55 collection in a little bit of detail and do some hands-on patching of them. So come up with some sort of like patching ideas. Now, I've got one specific idea in my head that I want to try and achieve. Um, and what I want to do in this video is, okay, well, how can I achieve that end result? What modules might I use? What are the pros and cons? What are the different ways that we can achieve the same thing? Because there are multiple ways of achieving, uh, generally speaking, a particular sort of like requirement when you are patching your synthesizer and your modules. So the particular requirement that I've got in my head uh, that I'm going to go through in this video. There's a piece of functionality in one of my favorite synths of all time that I've bought in the last five years, and that's the Moog Matriarch. And the Moog Matriarch, I was blown away by the sound of it. Uh, those four gorgeous oscillators, those gorgeous filters. Um, and I was blown away by the stereo filter capability that it has. It's so beautiful. So you have two low pass filters in the Moog Matriarch one set on the right channel, one set on the left channel. Um, and you can offset the cutoffs of those uh, two filters and modulate that or just play around with it with a control on the front panel and you can create some gorgeous stereo effects. It's that capability that I want to investigate in this video and see can we come up with something similar using Behringer System 55 modules. Because let's face it, we've got some gorgeous oscillators, and we've got some gorgeous filters with the Behringer System 55. Can we recreate that kind of matriarch, stereo, beautiful sound? That's what's coming up in this video. I really do hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much for watching. Right, so this is the case of modules I'm gonna be using, not all of them for sure. Uh, you'll see there I've got two low pass filters uh, already with cables coming out of it. So one low pass filter is on the left channel and one is on the right channel. Now what I'm gonna put into these two filters for this little patching exercise is a cord, uh, a sort of a drone cord if you like. I'm just going to take the four 921 oscillators that you can see in the top row. I'm gonna mix those together with that mixer that's in the center there. Um, and then take the output from the mixer into both of the filters. So each filter gets the same audio input. I'll just show you very briefly now how that is all patched up. So now let's turn up the volume and just hear what we've got. And let's try playing around with the cutoffs of those two filters. So, what I want to do in terms of patching these modules is to, rather than having to play around with those two cutoffs independently, uh, I want to be able to set them with an offset or whatever uh, and then be able to modulate both of these filters together just with one control, not two. So my first idea, the simplest patching I think, is to use an attenuator. If you imagine one of these attenuators, uh, and it supplies a voltage from say zero up to a maximum and then I use that attenuator, I take its output and I apply it to both of the filters at the same time then I can basically control both cutoffs with the one control, turn them both up, turn them both down. I can have the cutoffs offset on the modules themselves but be able to attenuate them manually like this. So for this to work, I need a voltage of some kind to pass into my attenuator. By itself, it does nothing. So we're gonna need a fixed voltage from somewhere, and that's where this CP35 module comes into play. It's the only module available here in the collection that gives us fixed voltages. We have a plus six volts and a minus six volts. So let's see how we patch it.
So this is just one way of patching it. I've used an attenuators module and a multiples module, the 995 and the 994. But I don't actually have to have used these two modules because if you look at the attenuators CP35 module over here, you'll see that as well as the fixed voltage, it has got its own attenuators and it's got multiples as well. So let's just patch it exactly the same but using this module and we don't have to worry about these two. So what we've got here so far is very cool. Uh, with this single attenuator, we can either open up both filter cutoffs or close down both filter cutoffs synchronized. Um, but what if we wanted to try something even better than that? Why don't we try and open up the cutoff of one filter while we are closing down the cutoff of the other and vice versa to get that kind of offsetting effect? How would we achieve that? Well, to do that, one of these needs to be increasing as I turn up this attenuator while the other one is decreasing. We basically need to invert one of these signals. So there are many ways to do this. Um, the first way I'm going to show you is by changing as little as possible here, by leaving the patch as it is as far as I can. To invert a signal, as far as I can see, the simplest way to do it is with an attenuverter, which is an attenuator that can also invert. And we have one here on this control voltages module, the 992. This is an attenuverter. It can go positive and it can go negative. And if I turn it fully negative, what I'm doing is taking an input and negating it and providing it at the outputs. So I'm going to take one of these CVs, pass it into this attenuverter, negate it, invert it basically, and then put it into the filter. And let's see what that sounds like. But as I said before, there are other ways to achieve this. If we look at a mixer module, for example, we'll see there that you can get the output from it inverted as well as normal. So we can use a mixer instead of an attenuator and achieve a positive and negative output. So let's see how that would be patched. So this is all very nice. Um, I love the sort of like the inversion of the cutoffs as you sweep. But there's a problem, and there was the same problem when we were using the attenuators as the mixer. There's no way for me to automate this with say an LFO. I can't automate that with a CV input on a mixer, nor on the attenuators. 
and that's where we turn to yet another approach and that is to use a voltage controlled amplifier because believe it or not voltage controlled amplifiers are just attenuators that you can modulate they are attenuators with a cv modulation capability um, so here's our attenuator on our amplifier and we can automate that with control voltage inputs let's try that next We get the same effect as before. However, we can automate this with an LFO or an envelope or whatever else we want to use and pass a control voltage in. So let's have a go at that next. So I'm going to use an LFO. And now, as you can see, I've used up my four 921 oscillators up there. So I'm going to use this 921B oscillator that I have here. I'm going to use it as an LFO. You'll see it has a low mode, so it can do low frequency oscillation, but still it's not very slow. Um, you, we're going to need to do something to this oscillator to make it slow. And as someone very helpfully pointed out to me in the comments of my uh, System 55 review, uh, we can make this oscillator produce very slow LFO frequencies uh, by passing into it a negative voltage, the minus six volts. If we pass it in as the link frequency, we can really slow this oscillator down a lot. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. But let's first hook up this oscillator's output, say its sine wave output, to modulate the amplifier. So we can at least hear the speed of the oscillator before we start playing around with the speed of it. Sine wave output. into amplifier. There you go. So it's on the low. Let's tune it right down. That's as low as it goes. It's not very low. Let's make it even lower. I'm going to take minus six volts and pass it in to this link frequency. That's a lot slower, that's really nice. But how fast can it go? Not very fast. So this is the thing with these 921A and B modules. This is giving you all of the control over the frequency, and this is just giving you very fine uh, detune, basically. So if we want to use our oscillator, our 921B, as an LFO, uh, and, and be able to have some control over the speed, then we really need to be attenuating this minus six volts. Uh, so let's use one of the attenuators there. So I'm going to take my minus six volts, go into an attenuator, and then from the attenuator, go into the oscillator. Now I've got control over how slow or fast that oscillator is going to go. And ideally, we want to actually attenuate the output from the oscillator before it goes into the amplifier. Here we're hearing like the full range of modulation, but we might want to make it more subtle. So ideally, we would go through an attenuator. And you can see that these attenuators become really very important. 
So let's go through this attenuator. That's maximum. And then we can get really quite subtle. Right, so we'll leave it there before I start getting carried away. Um, I mean, for me, the next logical thing to do was to be re replacing that LFO actually with a joystick, because what I've come to realize is that joystick Eurac modules are so much fun. Um, I didn't realize this until a few months ago when I got mine, how you can obviously you know, manually um, be modulating and synchronizing the modulation of multiple things at the same time with joysticks is, is really uh, very musical and, and, and very creative, or can be very creative. So uh, maybe that will be a subject for another video, another day, the use of joysticks in Eurac. Um, but that's what I'm going to leave it with this video. As you can see there, hopefully, you know, there are multiple ways of patching these uh, these modules to get very similar results or, or to take an existing patching idea that works and then move it to the next level. Let's add something else, add something else, add something else. It's very, very, very enjoyable, very addictive. It's a huge amount of fun. Um, and as you can hopefully see there, you can take something and then kind of go beyond your initial ideas uh, your initial requirements and, and, and takes you down some different avenues, uh, sort of like sonic exploration. Uh, loads and loads of fun. You don't have to be a keyboard player. You could have a sequencer going on there or just be playing drones like I was doing there for that very simple example. Loads and loads of fun with these modules and they do sound absolutely wonderful. So that's it for now. Until the next video, as always, thank you very, very much for watching.